Hey guys, Asha from Mobile Geeks here. Cheers from San Francisco. We're here in an incubator called Digital Garage, which is, um, I think, established by Japanese investors. They are here for over 20 years right now. And uh, we're about to do an unboxing. And you might know that I'm a huge Fabbit fan. This was my very first one from IFA 2011, the first Samsung Galaxy Note. And I remember people were making fun out of it. This is too big, this is too square, and no one's going to use it. Well, it was a huge success. Then there came the Galaxy Note 2. And then we've had the Galaxy Note 3. And then I stopped using Galaxy Note because the 4 was a little bit too much for me, also in terms of the resolution. But now I just scored the Galaxy Note 5. We are about to unbox it. I will run it through the paces and do some benchmarking and I will give you my final verdict. Okay guys, I have to admit something. I'm gonna fake this unboxing a little bit because I already did it for the German side. And um, I just couldn't get this wrap around this box anymore. So this is how it looks like right now. I bought it here over at the T-Mobile Market Street in San Francisco. $6.99 for the 32 gigabyte version. It is insanely expensive. And I wonder if it is good enough for me to, you know, get me over into the fabric world of Samsung again, because I ditched the Galaxy Note 4 and I was a loyal user of the Samsung Galaxy Note series. So yeah, I need this little pin to change my SIM card and it even comes with a little um, SIM card in here. So, and what we can see over here is the PSU and look at this. So they got um, the headset into a nice little box. That's new, isn't it? Not sure if they did this on the S6 Edge or on the Galaxy S6. And then we have a USB to micro USB and that's about it. And I'm not gonna walk you through the warranty cards and blah, 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 blah. No one needs that. Let's take a look at the device. And I choosing the black version, right? So let's talk about the specification. Let me just quickly switch it on and swipe it down. Well, first of all, you know what, before we're starting about uh, starting to talk about specification. I just love this screen. Look at the thin bezels on the side. 5.7 inch. Well, I think it's 5.66 quad HD resolution. That means 25, uh, uh, 2560 by 1440, which is 518 pixels per inch. Not sure if you really need that because I still won't be able to see any pixel on a 1080p device, but this is what Samsung is doing right now, using those Quad HD displays on these devices. Um, it sports the Samsung Exynos 7420, which is a quad-core SoC, 2.1 gigahertz, uh, four cores and four cores in 1.5 gigahertz, 64-bit architecture, and um, it's using a 14 nanometer um, production so um, compared to Intel on their Skylakes and on their Haswells they're actually the first ones to use this on a, on a mobile platform which makes a huge difference in terms of the power consumption and this is why this device actually wants longer on a single charge than the Galaxy Note 4 even though they're both sporting the same um, the same battery in terms of the capacity. Uh, it has four gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. You know what, actually I can't tell you if it's dual channel or not. If you guys know this, just leave me a comment down below. Um, 32 or 64 gigabyte of internal storage using UFS 2.0 flash memory, which is also super fast. Um, in terms of the cameras, we have a five megapixel camera on the front with a 1.9 aperture lens and another 1.9 aperture lens is on the back by the 60 megapixel one and with an optical image stabilizer. And as you can tell, obviously the black version is a fingerprint magnet. But besides that, I love the, this kind of metal frame here. Um, this is the power button. And then over here we have the stylus. You see, just pushing it in there and then it pops out. Um, we have the speaker here, a micro USB controller, and um, over there you can just connect your headset and then we have a volume control. What's quite interesting is um, the way they're balancing this. Uh, this is 121 grams and by the way it's 7.6 millimeters thick. But what I love about this device is 
it is just so well balanced. If you compare this to an Apple iPhone 6 Plus, which in my opinion is quite heavy um, on the bottom part of it, oh sorry, on, no, on the top part of it, um, this is just so very well balanced that seriously, I absolutely love this. Yes, of course, it comes with TouchWiz, but if you compare this to the first generations of TouchWiz, I think Samsung did not only do a step back, but like two or three steps back, uh, creating a quite clean, I wouldn't say it's a vanilla experience, especially when you're taking a look at the notification bar here, but still, it is quite clean. Uh, this looks good, and of course, the performance is absolutely amazing. Um, what I would love to show you is, of course, uh, let's take a quick look at the Android version. If you don't know this so far, so this is running on 5.1.1. And we also know that Samsung really, really worked on their um, update cycles, so you're supposed to get a new version as soon as it's coming out. Not really as soon as it's coming out, but a couple of weeks after that. And so um, after all the Motorola's are getting theirs and the Nexus phone, um, Samsung, you know, did pretty well in the past when it comes to this. Um, to be honest, I'm getting rid of all of this. I'm getting my Nova Launcher on there, and then I'm fine on all my pre-installed apps, all the apps that I'm using on all my other devices. Um, what I would love to do is I would just show you something really interesting that I just figured out. Um, not sure if you're familiar with this device. So, oh yes. First of all, it is a dirty display device. <laughs> That's the Mi Note, um, not the Pro. Um, this is the one with the Snapdragon 801. And it's a 5.5 inch tablet, 1080p uh, display. And uh, what I just realized, look at this. It's like um, turning an Edge, an S6 Edge or an S6 Edge Plus uh, upside down. So you can see how they have these round edges, but the Mi Note was actually the first device to do that, so Samsung getting a little bit inspired by the Chinese company here. Well, you let me know in the comments what do you think about this. Um, plus, I mean, this device is a third of what you have to pay for a Samsung Galaxy Note 5. And the question is, does it really uh, give you like two times or three times the performance and quality? In this hardware, I'm not so sure about this, and this is why um, those companies are so successful. This is an absolutely amazing device. Um, the fabric that I'm using right now is here the Huawei Ascent Mate 7. Um, this is a 6 inch device, but look at the difference right now. Let me just switch on the screen here. You see that. So 5.7 inch compared to a five, uh, 6. Oh, inch a device. Um, it, it's much wider. Look how it's almost like thin. The Note Five, huh? But it's thicker. It's definitely thicker. Um, yeah, this is my daily driver, and this is mainly because of the forty-one hundred milliampere hour battery. And I have all the other phones. I, for me, it's about battery life. So look at this one here. So here's the LG G Four with this iconic um, backplate. And this is a 5.5 inch, and you can tell that the Samsung is quickly a little bit higher. Yeah? And then what else do we have here? What about the OnePlus? I have it somewhere. Oh, the OnePlus 2. Hello, OnePlus 2. Where is it? At least I already have the OnePlus 1 over here. So that was also a 5.5 inch. Oh. See that? I've been using that one for the last nine months before I switched over to the Huawei Ascent Mate 7. Here is the OnePlus 2. Finally. Look at this. It's almost the same size. I just love the back of it. Seriously, the OnePlus 2, in terms of the build quality, absolutely amazing device. And this cost you starting at 329 or 339 US dollars? This was a 760 something with all taxes. Jesus, for a phone, you can get an ultrabook for this. Gosh, it's a crazy world we're living in, isn't it? And last but not least, I have here um, the S6 Edge. Uh -huh. And, oh, by the way, there you can see already how I'm setting up my phone. So this is a Nova launcher. 
and I'm using the same widgets on each and every phone. Uh, it always looks the same. I just, I love this edge design, yeah. It's just it's beautiful. And especially when you just, you know, I, I carry my phones always in a sleeve. Look at this. So you open up this kind of wallet um, case and all you see is screen. Well, obviously, not on the bottom and on the top, but on the side. It is beautiful. What a beautiful device. So, what can we make out of this? Um, first of all, I just love how it feels. You know, I, I, I pick it up for the first time and I think, oh my god, this is, this is actually a quite thin 5.7 inch device. Because if you compare this, for example, to, I mean, look at... I have the Galaxy Note 3 here. Yeah. See that? Look, it got much thinner because of the thinner bezels. So, not, not, I don't have really, really large hands, right? Oh, okay, my fingers are a little bit longer. But now, let, let's check this out, right? Look how I, I have a hard time to reach my middle finger with my thumb. Now, let's try this here on the new one. See? That's no problem at, problem at all. Look at this. I can just hold it like this. Yeah. While wow, this one. See that? I almost can't do that. Which helps you to really reach into all these corners. I won't say that this is um, a device that you would constantly use just with one hand, because this is like a two-hand scenario for me, especially when you're using a stylus, right? But still, you know, I can I can reach to almost all of these corners, which is also a matter of me being a fablet user and I know how to do these things. Um, if you compare this one, let me let me just show you the, the evolution of these tablets. All right, I have the, the very first note here, I'm the second generation, the third generation, and then I skipped the fourth, and now we have the note five. Yeah. Um, I think that this this is a beautiful device. This is just letting all the competitors know who is just the king of the tablet market. Um, are they still very competitive when it comes to the pricing? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think you can, you, can, you can get better devices for your money, right? When we're talking about a $300 device like um, the Mi Note here, and if I compare this to a 750 or maybe even eight or $900, depending on which version you're getting, um, I would recommend something like this. But if you're an enthusiast, and if you will, will want to get the best display that is out there, if you want to get um, the best SOC that money can buy right now in the mobile space, and that's the Samsung Exynos 7420, you might want to take a look at the Galaxy Note 5 Plus, even though that it has uh, the battery has the same capacity as the Samsung Galaxy Note 4, um, 30 hundred milliampere hours. Um, the battery life is better on this one, and with a quick charging system, you can recharge this in under 90 minutes. All of the 30 hundred milliampere hours, and uh, I think this is absolutely amazing. By the way, on the on the wireless charger, it takes about two hours. Yeah. It is a beautiful device. You're really getting quality for your money. Uh, this gets me way more excited than the Galaxy Note 4 ever, ever did. And you know, but there's a reason why I don't have the Galaxy Note 4. And here, seriously, I'm a lover of, of, of tablets, so I, I, I still have the boxes of all of them. So if you have any questions, if you are interested in me doing a special video, leave me a comment down below. If you want to know anything else about the Galaxy Note 5, just let me know. If you like these one taker videos, I know they're a little bit different than all the other channels. Uh, just give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. I'm Sasha from Mobile Geeks. Thanks for watching. Bye.